to learn knowledge and strategies to help him cope with his specific learning difference. Dawn has since also applied what she has learned to help her struggling pupils in schools bridge the, the gap and become more successful learners. To share her inspiring journey of learning and teaching both her son and her students, please join me in welcoming Dawn to deliver her valedictorian speech. Thank you, esteemed members of the faculty, proud family members, and congratulations to the magnificent graduates of Class 2019. Congratulations to no more long essays to write and piles of reading to be done. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm doing my assignments, my bed would send out serious nap rays and I just can't help myself. The fluffy pillows and warm comforter are more powerful than my self-control. Please tell me I'm not alone. <laughs> I guess not. But we've done it and conquered all the assignments and examinations. So yeet to that. First of all, I would like to thank DAS Academy for giving me the extraordinary honour to give the valedictorian speech for this graduation ceremony. I'm going to share with you three simple stories to sum up my teaching and learning journey. The first story is one of empathy. I've been teaching for at least 13 years now. When I first started teaching, I was given the opportunity to teach students of various profiles from the high to meet and even low progress learners. I remember myself as a young, passionate teacher who never failed to remind the students how to look out for commonly misspelled words, succinct answering techniques for their comprehension questions, and widening their vocabulary in order to write well. In my teaching career, I sometimes came across low-progress students who had such difficulty in reading, spelling, and writing skills. For instance, they would perpetually write the letter L in uppercase or capital letter, could not distinguish between when and when, or in worse situations, not being able to read words that are more than three syllables long. I never could understand why they couldn't complete such easy tasks and often got very frustrated or impatient with them. Things changed pretty soon when I had my first child. He seemed to face similar problems as those students and his preschool teachers told me that he needed a lot more help than his peers. Suspecting something amiss, we brought him for an assessment, and he was then diagnosed with dyslexia in primary one. That was when I started desperately finding all ways and means to help my child to learn to read, spell, and write. Thus, I embarked on my learning journey with DAS Academy back in 2015, with the first induction of Certificate in Dyslexia and Literacy Teaching course. It was indeed an eye-opening experience, as I had never known there could be so many ways to learn how to spell a word or to pronounce a phoneme. I'm absolutely certain all the graduates here can relate to me when I mention the extreme jitters I felt as I sat waiting to take the oral test with the card drill. A hard C says K, as in cat, and a soft C says S, before the letters E, I, and Y, as in cyber. Yet you know what I'm talking about. Um, that's still stuck in my brain. I fed pretty well, uh, thank goodness, and after the course, I began working fervently with my child on a card drill, and soon enough, he was able to spell and read a lot better. I found the strategies I learned so useful that I conducted a series of mini workshops myself in school and shared those skills with my colleagues. As enlightened as I was after the workshops, they marveled at the approach, and one of them even remarked, is a sure win for our Spelling Bee contestant next year. Back in my classrooms, I began using the same approach to guide my struggling learners, and I found that it worked equally well. Humbled by this experience, I learned that if I had more empathy towards my students, with genuine connection and understanding, they were able to achieve a growth mindset and strive harder. In fact, when teachers are caring, supportive, and responsive to their students, the learning environment is significantly enriched. So I urge you to share stories and personal experiences with your students, practice empathy, and connect with them on a more personal level. The second story is one of resilience. Shortly after attending primary one in a local school, 
I felt that my child was struggling with math as well, and I couldn't be sure if he had dyscalculia. He couldn't solve word problems and was often confused with the different operations in math. Being a devoted mother who really wants to help him, I signed up for the certificate in dyscalculia and numeracy teaching in 2016. I've always had math anxiety myself. Even today, I have difficulty determining if I've got the right change after buying my favourite bubble milk tea, especially if it involves a lot of coins. So, it was a monumental decision for me to take on a math-based certificate as I was exhilarated not to have anything to do with math anymore after my A-level in second, sorry, after my A-math in secondary school. But I knew I had to help my child. And the only way I could do that was to learn from the best. Miraculously, I think I did pretty well for the course and I started to apply some of the problem-solving skills I've learned to teach my child. I'm proud to say that he's currently using the Chinese lattice method in P4 for long multiplication instead of the conventional one. And he is 100% accurate in his calculations. I would like to tie in my own resilience in taking on a math course despite my fear and finding it daunting on top of my work commitment with my child's resilience in overcoming his difficulty with his studies. Because no matter how tough the process is, there's always a pulse-pounding rush that came from completing those assignments and submitting them on time. Never forget to pamper yourself after such moments. For me, a cup of bubble milk tea would be a real treat and I made sure that I got the right change. You know how it is, taking shit from your kids is definitely number one in the parents' manual, but so is being damn proud of them when they achieve something so great. My son's got a pretty good grade in his previous math assessment, and that's a marvellous improvement for him. I'm extremely proud of you, son. It's just right there. So, do you have resilience and do you teach your students to have resilience? When students believe that they are worthy and capable of overcoming challenges, they become resilient. Teach them to always hold on to positive thoughts and manage their challenges and failures. Help them deal with unforeseen circumstances linked to change, challenge and adversity. Ask them what they have learned from their mistakes and what they will do the next time they find themselves in the same situation. The third story is one of gratitude. Although the challenges of being a parent with SPLD is great, I'm still filled with gratitude to have found help and being able to provide interventions to support him well. You may have noticed that I took one certificate course per year. This is because I found that often, life throws things at you that you never expect. So it wasn't a planned effort on my part to pursue the specialist diploma initially. But as they said, one thing led to another. Um, and I was then taking the certificate in supporting the SPLD learners in advanced literacy in February 2017, followed closely by three other certificate, certificate courses in September and October that year. I started thinking, why not? I've completed all six required certificates, and I just needed to do the practicum to achieve my specialist diploma. Even then, I was apprehensive as I wasn't sure if I could balance work, studies and family and hence contemplated for some time before I finally committed myself to completing the practicum last year. I'm tremendously thankful to have the chance to develop professionally through taking the specialist diploma in SPLD with DES Academy. I want to express my incredible gratitude to all the lecturers and tutors who have lent me a hand to get me to where I am now. I would like to give special thanks to Ms. Sylvia Fu, my supervisor for the practical module. It's been a great joy to work with you, and you offered such invaluable guidance to me. I would like to thank my beautiful family, my husband, my son, and my daughter. You guys are my rock, and most of all, my son. I love you so much. And I started this journey because of you, and I made it. I promise to share this joy with you, and we've done it. I would like to thank all my students who share their enthusiasm in learning with me. It means the world to me. Graduating class of 2019, I would like to invite you to stop negativity, stress, insecurity and fear with one word, gratitude. It's one of the most powerful mindsets you can have in your life. After all, there's no better feeling than an overflowing heart. What moments have brought you love today besides this graduation ceremony? Renowned physicist Stephen Hawking, who was also dyslexic, once said, 
The challenge of dyslexia is something that you can make your own and make it a reason to be a winner in life. As you leave this auditorium today, remember to be a winner in life. When you see that child in your classroom needing your help, show empathy, exercise resilience and press on. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. And don't forget to show gratitude and celebrate every moment of joy in your life. Thank you.